Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're going to be talking about improper integrals. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We're going to have the question, what is an improper integral? But of course, we're going to go through an example first to really understand it. So here we have a function 1 over x squared, which is marked out right here. And we're going to go ahead and find its area between 1 and some number b. So b can be any number. So in order to find the area between a curve and the axis, we're going to be doing the integral. So here the area is going to be the integral between 1 and b, whatever our b is equal to, of 1 over x squared dx. So we know how to integrate this, right? We can rewrite 1 over x squared as x to the negative 2, so that way we can use power rule. When we do that, we get x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 evaluated between 1 and b, which we can rewrite as negative 1 over x between 1 and b. Plugging in upper minus lower, we get negative 1 over b minus a negative becomes a plus 1. Or if you wanted to rewrite that, that's 1 minus 1 over b. So the question is, what do I want b to be? Well, what if I let b go to infinity? Notice here we know what our graph does. 1 over x squared as x goes to infinity goes to 0, right? So if I know my function is going to 0, it's converging to 0, does that mean we can find the area? Like, can we find the area of what seems like an infinite area? Well, here's what we do. We're going to go ahead and take the limit as b goes to infinity of our integral. So here we have the integral of 1 to b of 1 over x squared dx, which we already found that's going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over b. So as b goes to infinity, 1 over infinity, that's going to approach 0. So this is going to be 1 minus 0, which is equal to 1. So yes, we can find the area of an infinite area, and it's actually going to be finite. So this entire area is going to be equal to 1. And that's a weird concept, but think about it. The function is going to 0. So at some point, the area, like this little tiny area, at some point, it's going to be so tiny that it's not adding anything anymore. And so we kind of just get to ignore it, and we get to say, well, the whole area is just going to be equal to 1. So let's talk about different types of improper integrals. The one that we just saw is the integral from a, whatever our a value is, our starting value, all the way to infinity. So the thing is, is that we don't like having infinity inside the integral. So what we need to do is mix limits and integrals. So we take the limit as b approaches infinity, and we replace that upper bound with infinity. So here's a graph of what it looks like. We take the integral between a and b, and we let b go to infinity. So as our function goes to 0, we can try to find a finite solution for it. The other version is where we have a normal upper bound, so that's just going to be a number, but our lower bound is going to negative infinity. So we rewrite this as the limit as a goes to negative infinity, and we replace our lower bound as a. So an example of this is a visual right here, is where we have that upper bound of b, but on the left side, our a is going all the way to negative infinity, and so we're accounting for that entire area. Our third type of improper integral is when we have both the upper and the lower bounds are infinity. And so what we have to do is we first have to separate it. So we take some c value where the function is defined. The function has to be defined at c. And in our example, our c value is right here. It's a blue value. It's just any value that we choose. So we split it up into two different integrals. And then we apply the first and the second improper integrals. So we take the limit as a approaches negative infinity, and we replace our lower bound. And we also take the limit as b approaches positive infinity and replace our upper bound. And notice here that we have that middle bound of c. Here's a visual of what that would look like. That's where both ends are going off to infinity, and we're trying to find an area that will account for that. So we're going to go ahead and try our first example. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative 3x dx. So first thing that you always have to do with improper integrals is you need to rewrite it because we do not like having that infinity inside the integral. The reason that it's considered improper is that you can't actually plug in infinity. When you do upper minus lower, you cannot plug in infinity because infinity is just a concept. It's not an actual number you can hold. Like I, we can grab the number one. We know what that's equal to, but infinity could be like a hundred thousand, a million thousand. I don't know if that's a number. You get the idea. So here, that's why we replace it with b, e to the negative 3x dx. So now that we rewrote it so it's more proper, we're going to go ahead and evaluate the integral. So here, what we do is we take the normal antiderivative, divide by negative 3, and we evaluate it between the upper and lower. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you wanted to rewrite it first, you totally could. That's going to be negative 1 over 3e to the 3x evaluated between 0 and b 
the limit as b approaches infinity, let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower, negative 1 over 3e to the 3b, and that's going to be plus 1 over 3e to the 0. So notice, as b approaches infinity, that entire term is going to go to 0. 1 over infinity is going to go to 0. So what this is going to be equal to is 1 over 3e to the power of 0, which we can just rewrite that as 1 third. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in the graph. Here we have the function e to the negative 3x, and we can see that that little area is going to be equal to 1 third. Because our function at some point, I can't even see the area within the between the graph and the x-axis, right? That's because the area gets so little, it really doesn't add anything anymore. So here the area is 1 third. So here we have an improper integral where we have both infinities. So the first thing we need to do is find a value to separate the two infinities. So I'm going to have an integral from negative infinity to that number plus the integral from that number to infinity. So you want to plug in a number that's not undefined. In this case, I always suggest trying 0 whenever you can, but make sure that it's actually defined. If I plug in 0 to 1 over 1 plus x squared, we just get 1. So that's totally legal. Now that we rewrote it with that middle number, now we're going to go ahead and rewrite it properly. So here it's the lower value, so we have a going to negative infinity, a to 0 of dx over 1 plus x squared plus, and now we'll take the limit as b approaches infinity, and that's going to be 0 to b of dx divided by 1 plus x squared. So now we have proper integrals. So let's go ahead and find those antiderivatives. We know that this is going to be inverse tangent or arctangent evaluated between a and 0. This one's going to be also inverse tangent, of course, but this is going to be between 0 and b. So here we can plug in upper minus lower. Um, when we plug in 0, arctangent of 0 is a 0, and so that's going to be 0 minus, and that's going to be inverse tangent of a plus the limit as b approaches infinity. That's going to be upper inverse tangent of b and then minus inverse tangent of 0, which of course goes to 0. So this is a great reminder that it's good to know what these graphs look like. So of course I'm nice and I gave us a visual in case you don't remember. Here is the graph of arctangent and we have that as b approaches infinity, we approach a value of pi over 2. And when a approaches negative infinity, we approach a value of negative pi over 2. So that's always good to have in the back of your mind. So that means this is going to approach negative, negative pi over 2, right? Because don't forget, we also have this negative right here. And then plus pi over 2, that's going to be equal to pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is just equal to value of pi. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like with the graph. Here is the function 1 over 1 plus x squared. And we have that this area is just going to be equal to pi. So on either side, we can see that our function is converging to zero. So at some point, those areas are so, so tiny, they don't add anything. Our third example, we're going to mix it up with solids revolution, and we're going to have some applications here. So we have let r be the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals 1 over x, and the x-axis for x is greater than e or equal to 1. So here, we do not have an ending bound. We're going to go ahead and let b go to infinity. So I already have it graphed out right there. A, what is the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved around the x-axis? So I drew, a, drew us a beautiful photo. This is going to be going off to infinity, so pretend there's no end right there. So it's just forever that little, little tube. So here, let's talk about how we can find the area. If we took a slice, this would look like a circle. And we know that we can find the area of this circle, which is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared. So the radius is going to be all the way from the center going up to our function 1 over x. So we get 1 over x squared. So I also wrote out the formula right here, which is same thing. We're just adding up all of those areas. So this is going to be from 1 to infinity of our function squared, which that's going to be 1 over x squared dx. So let's rewrite it with a proper integral. We're going to let b go to infinity of pi, the integral of 1 to b, of x to the negative 2 dx. We already evaluated this integral. This is exactly what we did in the first example. I'll show us right here. We found that when we evaluated this um, integral, it's, it's going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over b. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We get the limit as b approaches infinity. We do have that pi, but this is just going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over b. So we know as b goes to infinity, this right here is going to go to 0. And so this is just going to be equal to pi. So we have this volume of this entire region is going to be equal to pi. And that means over here, we get so, so close to the x-axis 
that our volume, not just the area, the volume isn't adding anything anymore. So it's the same idea. Now let's go ahead and try to find the surface area of the solid when generated around the x-axis. So we're going to be working with the same visual here, but now we're doing surface area. I have the integral written out right here, what it should look like. So we have the area is going to be equal to, we're starting at 1 going to infinity of 2 pi times our function 1 over x times 1 plus, and let's go ahead and find the derivative. So the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared, quantity squared dx. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. So we're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity. We're going to make it, make it nice and proper. That's going to be 2 pi over x times the square root of 1 plus 1 over x to the fourth dx. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 1 over x to the power of 4 out of that radical. So if I pull out 1 to the x to the fourth, we're left over with x to the fourth plus 1 dx. But notice here what we can do is when we have a product inside the square root, we can separate it into two square roots. And what's the square root of 1 over x to the fourth? That's just going to be 1 over x squared, 1 over x squared. And here we can multiply those two together because that's just going to be um, x to the power of 3 in the denominator. So I'll go ahead and rewrite this so it looks a little nicer. So the question is, how are we going to integrate this? Let's go ahead and think about it a little more analytically. I know that the square root of x to the power of 4 plus 1 is definitely going to be greater than just the normal square root of x to the power of 4. When you add 1, it makes it a little bigger. And this is going to be equal to x squared. So that means if I multiply, if we have 2 pi divided by x cubed times x to the fourth plus 1, well, that's going to be greater than 2 pi over x cubed times the square root of x to the power of 4, right? And we found this is equal to 2 pi over x cubed times x squared which what, these x squares cancel out, and all you're left with is 2 pi divided by x, right? So let's go ahead and talk about this inside the integral. Here we have our normal integral. I just copied and pasted it. So then that means this has to be greater than the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 over b of just 2 pi over x dx, which we do know how to integrate that, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We take the limit as b approaches infinity, and this is going to be 2 pi, and times the natural log of x evaluated between 1 and b. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember that this is still greater than the, our original integral. So that's going to be 2 pi times the natural log of b minus 2 pi times the natural log of 1. That's just going to be 0, so I'm not going to write it out. And here, when we plug in infinity, natural log of infinity is going to go to infinity. And so here, what this tells us is that our original integral limit as b approaches infinity of 1 over b of 2 pi over x cubed times the square root of x to the power of 4 plus 1 dx is bigger than infinity. So that means that our surface area is going to be infinity. It's going to be infinite area. So that's a little bit of analytical calculus. I hope that was fun for you. I always love it. Let's go ahead and try one more. We're going to find the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved around the y-axis. And we have a hint here. We're going to use the shell method. That's mostly for me so I can remember to do the shell method. So I have a beautiful photo right here, and we're going to go ahead and do this thing. So let's go ahead and plug in our bounds. First, we have a lower bound of 1, right, because that's where we were starting. x is equal to 1. And we're revolving R, which is going all the way to infinity. So our upper bound is going to be infinity x times 1 over x dx. So let's go ahead and rewrite it so it's proper. We're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity of 2 pi, the integral of 1 to b. And we can simplify that inside to just be 1. And that's super nice. We know how to take the antiderivative of 1. Here we're going to get the value of x between 1 and b. We can go ahead and plug in upper minus the lower, which I'll go ahead and do. So what happens when we plug in infinity? Well, let's think about it. We get 2 pi times infinity minus 1, which that is just equal to infinity, right? So here we have when we revolve the solid around the y-axis, now we have an infinite volume. So our volume is infinite. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.